I'm Shauna Lawhorn with the League of Women Voters. Along with the League and SFGov TV, I'm here to discuss Proposition E, a ballot measure that will be before the voters on Tuesday, November 6th. The city currently imposes a hotel tax on the rental of hotel rooms. The tax is 14%, an 8% base tax, and a 6% tax surcharge. The tax goes into the general fund, and the Board of Supervisors and the mayor may allocate the money for any public purpose. The Arts Commission is a city agency that receives money from the general fund. The Arts Commission funds arts programs for youth, community, and arts education, approves designs of city-owned structures, oversees city-owned cultural centers, and selects art for city buildings and public spaces. In addition to funding the Arts Commission, the city runs other programs that fund nonprofit organizations to support arts activities and help neighborhoods maintain their unique cultural heritage. Proposition E would distribute up to 1.5% of the money raised from the current 8% base hotel tax for specified arts and cultural purposes. It would not change the hotel tax rate of 14%. In each fiscal year, it would require the city to make a distribution of set dollar amounts for these designated arts and cultural uses. $16.3 million to support nonprofit cultural organizations. $6.4 million for programs related to the Cultural Equity Endowment. $3.8 million to support city-owned community cultural centers. $3 million to support communities working to maintain cultural heritage in city neighborhoods, and $2.5 million to address needs in the arts community, as determined by a cultural services allocation plan. Dollar amounts will change subject to the receipt of tax revenues. After all of these distributions have been made for a fiscal year, any remaining portion of the funds would go into the general fund. A yes vote means if you vote yes, you want the city to distribute up to 1.5% of the current base hotel tax for specific arts and cultural purposes. A no vote means if you vote no, you do not want the city to make this distribution. I'm here with Kevin Seaman, community organizer from Yes on E and a proponent of the measure. Hi. Hi. And we're also joined by Nick Smith from the Libertarian Party of San Francisco and an opponent of the measure. Hi. Thank you. Thank you both for being here. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. We're going to start with opening remarks, and we're going to begin with you, Kevin. Great. Um, my name is Kevin Seaman. I'm an artist and a cultural worker, and I'm also a community organizer with the Yes on E campaign. Uh, I've lived in San Francisco about, for about 14 years, uh, and I've been a recipient of San Francisco Arts Commission's Individual Artist Commission grant three times. I'm very lucky to have that. Um, the reason I'm excited about Proppy is because without raising taxes, Proppy invests in San Francisco's cultural identity, in artists, in youth arts programs, art in neighborhoods, free public events, and in small, mid-sized, and large organizations. This is fiscally responsible legislation that was spearheaded by supervisors Katie Tang and Aaron Peskin, working with the city controller's office. Um, it has full support from the mayor's office, the Democratic Party of San Francisco, the Hotel Council, the United Educators of San Francisco, the Labor Council, and it received unanimous support, a uh, unanimous vote from the Board of Supervisors. Tourists come to San Francisco because we have such a vibrant and unique cultural identity. They come here to experience our culture, and they bring about uh, $1.7 billion annually. We want to restore the connection between hotel tax and arts and culture funding to invest in the future of arts and culture in San Francisco. Thank you. Opening remarks, Nick. OK, thanks. Um, so I believe art requires unrestrained uh, freedom of expression and creativity. And I think government is really the antithesis of this. Um, creating more government bureaucracy to deal with this. Uh, you know, government grants, they always come with strings attached, and I think that's really incompatible with art, and I think it's gonna be bad for the arts. I think you're gonna see um, not the culture of the city being preserved, but rather matching the political objectives of the people in charge in the city. Um, and really just making the arts and culture of the city dependent on government, I think is gonna be unhealthy for it, and it's gonna, it's gonna damage the arts over time. And uh, as the proponents say, it doesn't raise taxes. I think that's technically true. The hotel tax does not increase. However, um, the amount 
of the general fund, the $8 million, excuse me, the, uh, what is it, $370 million in the general fund that's directed towards, uh, that comes from the hotel tax is not going to shrink. However, it is going to shrink the amount that goes into the general fund. So there's going to be $32 million that's taken away by this measure. And where's that money coming from? It's coming from schools, public transit, uh, youth services, libraries. This is not me talking. This is coming from the city controller himself and his analysis. And really, if you believe that this cause is more important than those, which I think are very important as well, um, I, I just think the money's better spent elsewhere. Thank you. So our first question, uh, I think you can elaborate on what you were just saying. Uh, a little bit more with this is why do you oppose this measure? Um, well, I'm from the Libertarian Party of San Francisco. I'm the chairman. And generally, we think that government intervention in people's lives is, is damaging. It restricts people's freedom. And in this case, I think you would see the art. And as I said, uh, the culture is not going to be preserved. It's not going to evolve naturally. It's going to evolve to fit the political objectives of the people in power. And, um, and as I said, with spending, too, the city's always trying to spend more money. We have an $11 billion budget, and we have things that really do need to be improved, like public transit and schools, for, for two examples. And as the controller even says, that this is going to directly affect those. Yeah. Same question to you, except why do you support this measure? Yeah, um, like I said, I've been in this cultural ecosystem for 14 years. I've um, worked with the San Francisco Foundation as a grant maker. I've worked with many of our cultural centers that provide direct services and programs to both artists and to audiences. And um, I believe in this measure because it uses existing infrastructure to get money into communities. This is not uh, a new thing that's being invented to add additional hurdles. This is already how we get money out to communities. Really crucial do dollars, core operating grants that go to ab about 200 different organizations through grants for the arts, uh, cultural equity grants to organizations rooted in communities of color, LGBTQ communities, uh, uh, organizations that are led by women, veterans, and people with disabilities. Uh, it's going to help protect our cultural centers. These are organizations charged with retaining the unique cultural identity of neighborhoods, um, as well as an arts impact endowment that will be a flexible five-year plan. Uh, we'll come together with the Arts Commission to decide how we want those, that funding to be spent. Great. Uh, the second question kind of goes to the point Nick was making. Uh, would the reallocation of money uh, affect to the arts affect other city services? Uh, yeah, from my knowledge and the conversations that I've had, this is about 10% of the total hotel tax fund, so it's not a huge chunk. Again, we've worked with the controller's office, we've worked with city officials to make sure that we're not asking for more than our share. Um, this is legislation that was approved in 1961 by voters that has since been replicated nationwide. This is something that they saw as important tying tourism to cultural spending and to art spending. Um, this is a restoration of that. That link has since been severed. We want to reconnect those things, um, and we want to work within the growth of the hotel tax. Current line item budgets will not be affected. It would only be the percentage of growth, which will be a small percentage. Great. Same question to you, Nick. Okay. Um, well, as I said, there are a lot of other very important services the city spends money on, and I think of all of those, and compared to arts and culture, um, people are very, very willing to support the arts in San Francisco voluntarily. And we have a thriving art community. We have some amazing, diverse culture in the city, and everyone loves it. I believe. I do, certainly. Um, so I don't think that's going to struggle. What I think is struggling is our schools, our public transit. And these are really where we need taxpayer funds going, if we're going to be collecting taxpayer funds at all. Alternatively, uh, if you want to increase tourism in the city, um, how about by lowering the hotel tax, for one? So. The price of a hotel in San Francisco is not cheap at all. You might pay $200 a night, and then 14% tax on top of that. It's no small, uh, no small addition. So yeah, I think, I think uh, the arts as they are in San Francisco and the culture here is what attracts a lot of people. And I think it's going to continue to do that without dumping a ton of public money into it. Great. Closing statements. We're going to start with you, Kevin. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the San Francisco Arts Commission did a study a couple of years ago that found that 70% of artists have been displaced from their home, their workplace, or both. Arts aren't thriving in San Francisco, as my opponent uh, might think. Being deeply embedded with this community, we need more help. We need more support. Most arts organizations I know are treading water. They are not thriving. Uh, this is not a huge 
investment. It is a small investment, but it's a step in the right direction in a time when we desperately need it. Thank you. Uh, closing remark, Nick? Okay, um, I don't want to sound in any way that I'm not saying that arts are important. So I did say there are things that are, we're spending money on that are more important, I believe, but arts are definitely important and our culture is definitely important and thank you very much for your involvement in it. Um, but as I say, people voluntarily will support the arts. If you want to support the arts, go see a show. Go become a member of your museum. Um, support them that way, voluntarily. Um, and uh, yeah, it's much harder to do that, to say, donate money to Muni. Nobody's going to do that. Nobody's going to donate money, well, maybe to their public schools. Uh, but a lot of that is, is funded through taxes, of course. So yeah, I just think art is not a function of government. It doesn't belong under government's branch. And um, yeah, it's a product of individuals expressing themselves and having support from their community and having tight integration with the community. So if you inject government into that, I think it's gonna create some different incentives. We're gonna see a different result and we're not gonna see the same culture that we have continue to evolve. We're gonna see it take a different political direction to meet whatever objectives uh, people in City Hall have. Um, so I would say, yeah, don't leave this to a committee. Let the public decide what is good art and what art they want to support. And I really don't believe uh, that we're going to have any problems with um, embracing the diverse cults and, uh, excuse me, arts and culture in the city. Great. Thank you both for your comments and for your time. Thanks for Thank having us. We hope that this discussion has been informative. For more information on this and other ballot measures in this year's election, please visit the San Francisco Elections website at sfelections.org. Remember, early voting is available starting October 9th at City Hall Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. You can also vote at City Hall on the two weekends before Election Day from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And if you don't vote early, be sure to vote on Tuesday, November 6th.